Turn with me in, in Matthew chapter 5, and I, the Beatitudes are verses 1 through, 1 through 10, 1 through 12, okay? I want you to go to verse 13. I want to take you to verse 13 because I want to set the stage for what's going on, what Jesus is doing, and the way I think we should apply what we learn over the next few weeks about the Beatitudes, okay? So verse 13, you, somebody say you. you. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say you. Look at, tell me it's all about, yeah. Okay, God's talking to you. You need to know that. You are the salt of the earth, okay? But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Salt that is not salty, stay with me, is dirt. Y'all all right? Because it's a mineral. And if it loses its saltiness, it's really nothing more than just dirt. And so we have to understand that the saltiness of salt is what gives it value. It is no longer good for anything if it loses its, its saltiness, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot, walked on like dirt. Because salt has to be salty or it doesn't have value. Y'all listen to me. It is very easy in our Christian life to lose our saltiness. Now, I know that in today's world, being a little salty is not always seen as spiritual, all right? But I need us to understand that sometimes I think the church needs to, uh, I don't know, get, grow a backbone and get a little salty, okay? And I'll even say some of that in the terms of the modern use of the word, but you got to be salty, modern use, with saltiness, biblical use, y'all all right? All right, so the two have to go together. Let's keep going. Verse 14. You, somebody say you, you. are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Can I make a point? If you light a candle and you put it under a bowl, what's going to happen? It's going to go out. See, see, I always thought when I was younger, well, that's just covering up the light. The light can't be seen because you covered up the light. Here's the problem. If you cover up the light, it's true. You can't see the light. But the other half of that is the candle goes out. The fire goes out. We've got to be careful. Same thing as losing a saltiness. They don't put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand up high. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Watch that they may see your good deeds... So good deeds matter. Stay with me. That's going to matter later on. And glorify your Father in heaven. Understand the motivation of the good deeds. Okay? All of that's going to matter as we go forward. Why do the Beatitudes matter? Why would we even need to uh, study this? Why did Jesus teach us this? Well, I think the Beatitudes matter because they shift the way I see what is going on around me and in me. They shift the way I understand things. If you have a bad attitude about something, you're not going to do good at it. You're not going, you're not going to give it your best. If you th now, now, you say, well, what, what, what do you watch? You are the salt of the earth. And you are the light of the world. Now that sounds real good in church, doesn't it? Yeah. Somewhere around halfway through Monday, <laughs> when that co-worker that gets on your nerves finishes their coffee and wakes up, <laughs> you feel salty, worldly sense, but not very salty, biblical sense. And all of a sudden, you don't feel like being the salt of the earth. You don't feel like being the light of the world. Can I tell you that over time, it gets tiring? Y'all are right. Preachers never say this. I'm just going to tell you. Y'all, we'll keep it real today because I'm tired. If I told you about my weekend, y'all will be like, why are you even up there? Because it's been crazy, all right? It's just been crazy. We have, there's been no downtime. Tina and I have not had any downtime this weekend. It's been awesome. No, I, I'm not complaining. A lot of that time was with our grandkids, and it's awesome, and they're, they're incredible. They're all perfect. 
and they wear us out. There's a reason that young people have children, because old people can't chase them that long. You know, I love it when they're there, and when they leave, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> just crash somewhere. And last night I had a bunch of other people's kids that weren't mine at the house. And they're all, I'm just, oh, y'all understand. All Your grandparents' senses come on. They're all going to get hurt at your house. And if they bleed at your house, it is your fault. Their blood is on your hands no matter what happened. You see what I'm saying? So you're like, <laughs> the whole time. So at any rate, all this is going on, right? So we got all this going on. So I'm tired, so I'm just going to keep it real with you. You don't always feel like being salt of the earth and the light of the world. And it gets tiring after a while. You want to quit. What keeps you from quitting? Your perspective. You say, I, 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 I know you want the answer to be, well, God does and the Holy Spirit does. And that's, that's true. But somehow you have to see the world the way God sees the world. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to protect yourself from the negative thoughts that will cause you to quit. And you're going to have to you're going to work alongside the Holy Spirit to see that happen. Y'all you, you, know I've been doing this workout thing with, with Pastor Dave, uh, CrossFit, which is not made for humans, um, and it's, it's just it's just not. And so and so they'll give us these workouts. Let me let me tell you how this works. Sometimes they put a workout up on the board, and there's like four or five move, movements, and you're like, I'm going to die. I'm just going to die. This is not possible. I can't do it. I'm going to die. You know, but then, it, then you look up top, and it's got 12-minute limit. Oh, okay, I could do that for 12 minutes. My mind changes. I'm good. Is this going to be horrible? It's going to be awful, but it's only going to be awful for 12 minutes. Now, let me pause. Some people say that after you work out long enough, you will get to where you desire it, and you enjoy it, and, and, it's, and it's just a joy. No! <laughs> It never happens. I enjoy the people I work out with. I enjoy being with them. You know, I really enjoy that. But the workout itself, when we all start working and nobody's talking anymore because you can't breathe, that part never gets better. And well, it'll quit hurting after a while. No! They are lying to you. It will always hurt. It always hurts. You say, well, but you're going to be swole. That ain't worth it. I'm married, she's stuck with me, and I'm staying with her. I ain't got to track nobody. Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Done with that part. <laughs> so so you, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? I mean, what, why, what, so why do I do this? Because I want to be healthy. Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to just waste away. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. And a body in motion tends to stay in motion. But I have to shift my mindset. If it's a 12-minute time limit, I'm good. Let me tell you the ones that kill me. Do 10 of this and 10 of this and 10 of this and 10 of this. And do it five times. Okay. Here's the rule with a do it five times or one of them was like do it seven times. Here's the rule with that. You can finish... When you've done this seven rounds, or you're dead. <laughs> Whichever comes first. Okay, now I'm depressed. Can I tell you, being salt and light is seven rounds. Over and over and over and over and over again. You say, well, Pastor, you've just depressed me, and I'm never coming back to church. I don't like the Bible, don't like God anymore. I'm depressed. No, no, no. No, you got to change your mindset. you got to change the way you see things. But if I do this, everything should be good, and I should be blessed, and I should be, I should be happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yeah, that's not the Bible. There are preachers that will preach that, and if you want to listen to it, you can. They're also going to sell you mineral water from Russia that will cure anything because it's from Chernobyl. <laughs> I don't know where it's from, by the way. Never mind. 
But, but you hear what I'm saying. I mean, you, you can find that, but that's not truth. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, that Jesus saw the crowds and he went up on a mountainside. He sat down and his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. And he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. I don't know. Stay with me. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who persecuted, who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Well, we need to sue them. No, you're, that's your blessing. You're going to sue somebody for your blessing? Y'all all right? Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What Jesus is doing is he's shifting your mindset. If you expect, and here's my, here's my major problem with, with, with happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise theology. Is if you expect that once you know God, only good things will happen in your life, then when bad things happen, you no longer trust God. And I'm here to tell you something that is true. Bad that y'all stay with me, life will punch you in the throat. Okay? That's in collisions 12. <laughs> Somebody's going, where is that one? I don't know that one. <laughs> he must be using a different Bible. <laughs> you know, I mean, but, but that's, that's just true. And then, but, but wait, let me tell you something. Life's going to punch you in the throat whether you believe in God or not. If you choose not to believe in God, the only difference is you don't have a hope for a better life after this one. See, Pastor Theo read a scripture when he came up. It was Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, right? Let me take you to verse 3. Do not be transformed any longer to the patterns of this world. Watch. But do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants to change the way you see the world, so he'll change the way you react to the world. And when you get punched in the throat, you don't forget who your God is. You stand back up because you understand that the daddy who stands behind you is bigger than the jerk that just punched you. You're all right. And by the way, that persecution and that hardship and that difficulty is all a blessing because it is building you for your work here and you will be rewarded for living through it when you get there. Y'all all right? It's a shift in mindset. I haven't even got, that's just the introduction. I have no idea how long the sermon's going to be. Never let a man preach when he's tired. It might never end. So, 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 so where we're at is we're at, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, this is, this is, how, how do I, how do I, let me just, let me let Jesus describe it, okay? Go with me to Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus gives us a parable that's going to help us understand poor in spirit, okay? So he gives us a parable that helps us work with this. Luke chapter 18, I'm going to start verse 9. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Hello. How many of y'all remember, how many of you are old enough to remember? It just dawned on me today because I did some research this morning how old this is. I did not realize how old this was. When Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live used to do the church lady. Yeah. Special. <laughs> Isn't that just special? You know, I mean, I mean, it, 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 the reason that was funny was because everybody that has ever gone to church back then knew somebody, stay with me, that was at least a little bit like her. 
a little bit holier. And I, I remember, I remember one lady came up to me, Brother Hills. She, her head was going. Let me ask you a question. Because she didn't like the sermon I preached. What can separate us from the love of God? <laughs> I looked at her. I was like, I was like 23 years old. You know, this lady, this lady had been a Christian. She'd been a Christian longer, two times longer than I'd been alive. You know, I mean, she'd been a Christian forever. I went, Sister Sarah, sin can. Well, I, she was in a West End church. And we do not believe there's any height of holiness from which one cannot fall. Therefore, you've got to constantly be working out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's not a, it's not a doctrine of eternal insecurity. It's being careful with your salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. She was eternal security and thought once you got saved, you just never, it was just so all done. Done. Brother Hilson. <laughs> and I knew where she was going with it because I knew what she was thinking. I never could figure out why she attended a Wesleyan church. I think she attended Wesleyan Church because there was this little spark of Pentecostal in her, but she wasn't willing to go full-blown Pentecostal. She wasn't going to run the aisle and stuff, but she wanted some of that <clears throat> in church, and Wesleyans have that without the other. And I heard one lady say, I love this church because it's like the spirit moves and you feel the spirit of God here, but it's without the chicanery. Y'all know that word, chicanery? It's without the, uh, the act. You know, if you, if you want to holler out, you can holler out here. If you want to lift your hand, you can lift your hand here. If you want to dance in the back, as long as you know how, you go for it. <laughs> if you don't know how to dance, stand still. <laughs> if you don't know how to sing, don't make noise. Just go watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> Everybody will think you're singing along. It's all good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but, the, but the truth is, the truth is, she, she had that church lady thing going on. She was better... Stay with me. Better than everybody else. And that's what Dana Carvey was getting at was there's these people that think they're better than everybody else. Two men went up. He told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Okay, hold on. Two men went to the altar because the pastor had an altar call. One was a board member and the other was a nasty heathen pig dog sinner. Y'all all right? You know, with me on this? Yeah. That, that, that's, what, that's how you need to see this. Yeah. So the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers and evildoers and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. And I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get. You see that, right? He really is living a good life. He's doing all the right things. He's just not feeling the right way. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. But he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who want to exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now watch. The Pharisee is not being poor in spirit. The tax collector is. You said, but I'm not sinning like that. That's not the point. That's just not the point. Because I, I, I want to teach you a couple of things. Clean hands, and I'm, I'm putting air quotes, right? Clean hands do not determine a heart. Amen. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You cannot be good enough to get salvation. I've had people look at me and say, well, if God don't let me in, he ain't letting nobody in because I'm better than all y'all. And I thought to myself, well, that's not poor in spirit. That's not going to work. I've had people say, I've done more good than all those church people, so I've done enough good that God's going to let me in heaven. That's not the way that works. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that you didn't do anything to earn. You can't do anything to earn. It is freely given and then we do our acts of service because, stay with me, we owe them. God has saved us, therefore we owe him. And part of our worship is to live with clean hands. Y'all all right? 
It is not us earning our way into heaven. It does not determine our heart. There are, stay with me. I'm going to say something that's going to hurt. A lot of good people, good people do some bad things. A lot of good people have bad hearts. You know, when you sit in a church, a church that is falling apart, and you begin to meet with the, with the folks in that church, you know what you'll often find? What they want to protect, what they want to maintain, is what they remember as a good church. So what they are saying is, I want church to be the way I want church to be. And I don't really care if anybody else wants it because it's not for them, it's for me. Therefore, the church becomes for the people that are already there. Y'all listen to me, that's not a church. That's a country club. That's not how church works. I love the way Chuck Colson said it. He said, the church is the only institution on the planet that exists solely for the benefit of its non-members. We exist to reach the ones that aren't here yet. You say, but they're going to mess up our church. <laughs> yeah, they are. But, they're gonna, but they're, it's going to be, they're, they're going to talk in, with words that we don't, we don't like. Yeah, I know. But they don't know how to act. Yeah, I know. But none of that's the point. Because this church is not for us. It is to reach them. You see how when you shift that mindset? Well, they need to learn to act like us. Well, that's not poor in spirit, what you just said. They need to learn to act like Jesus. That's fair enough. But Lord, help them if they all act like us. <laughs> Lord, help us if the entire world has to act like Southern Marylanders. <laughs> Y'all all right? The only benefit to that is the world would know how to make a, cra a crab cake. Because you don't bother buying one if you're outside of Maryland. Y'all all right? Come on now. Can I get an amen? Don't even try it. But, 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 y'all, the truth is we have to be poor in spirit, not haughty in spirit, not over the top believing. Can I tell you a story? I, I, I got reminded of this this week. Um, the people who called us here to be their pastor. You know their church died, right? What do you mean? What do you mean? The church shut down and you started over? No, 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 no. They built the church. But they allowed what was normative to them to die out so that what would be normative to you could be born. That means that we must be willing to allow what is normative to us to die out so that what is normative to the next generation can be born. Oh, you're talking about Theo and them. Okay, that's fine if you're my age. But that means that Theo and them have to allow what is normative to them to die out to reach what is normative to the next group. That's how the church works. And the reason so many churches shut down is you end up with a, a generation somewhere that decides it's too, more important for us to protect our traditions than it is for us to reach the lost so everybody that's not already here can just go to hell. I didn't cuss. Y'all all right? That's a lack of poor in spirit. We must be poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Clean hands do not determine a heart. But then the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven. He beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He understood himself. He understood his position before God. Dirty, in quotes again, hands do not determine a heart. I need you to understand that you cannot determine someone's salvation by what you see on the outside of them. 
You say, well, if they're doing this, they're not saved. Okay, there are a few things that's probably true about. But I, I'm afraid that we apply that to far more things than really matter. I, I remember being in college one time, and uh, we, we'd gone down to the Christian college, and we were in an Old Testament class on a, on a, on a Monday morning, I guess. I don't know. It was during the week. And so we sat down in the class. It was a large class. There were probably 50, 60 people in the room uh, in this, in this auditorium-style classroom. And one of the girls walked in, and she was wearing a miniskirt. Well, the professor didn't like that much. And so he started, rather than teaching the Old Testament, he started on about a 15 to 20-minute diatribe on how being a Christian means dressing appropriately at the right times. He shamed that girl in front of the whole group. Now, I have to tell you, I sat there angry the entire time he was doing that. Not because I didn't know her. I'd never, I never met her. I was just angry because I'm like, you are hurting someone right now. And there's no sense in that. That's not pastoral. That's not Christian. That's not kind. Should she be wearing that? I don't know. But if she's not supposed to be wearing that, why don't you catch her afterward and talk to her one-on-one? -on -one? In fact, you're an old man. That's creepy. Why don't you ask somebody else to do it? <laughs> Y'all all right? And he was an old man. You know, and so, so, you know, do I understand where he was coming from? Sure, I get where he's coming from. But you can't do that. And while he, he's trying to argue that she wasn't safe, I'm praying to God that he was wrong. Because that semester she died in a car accident. Oh. I believe he was wrong. But how would you like to carry the rest of your life knowing that that's what you said? in front of somebody who only had a short amount of time left. Because you'd never know how much time anybody's got left. you got to understand, God told us to be poor in spirit because he didn't want us to be haughty. He didn't want us to be prideful. He didn't want us to hurt people unnecessarily. Y'all all right? Truth is truth. Everybody got it? Don't even, oh, he's self-peddling the gospel. No, I'm not. Truth is truth. Sin is sin. What God said is true. Everybody's got it? Somebody say amen. amen. All of that's true, but you don't have to. Look, righteousness doesn't mean jerkiness. Okay. All right? You don't have to be a jerk. Be, be, be kind. Yeah. Be poor in spirit. Because you know what? All your righteousness is like filthy rags in the presence of God. And that's all of us. That's Sister Sarah. Y'all all right? You, you said, but, but, but I don't do all that. When you stand in front of God, you will beat your chest and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Because none of us are good enough to stand in the presence of a holy God and not feel like 900 pounds of sin on a popsicle stick melting. Y'all all right? I mean, we got to understand that. We got to understand who we are. We are all broken people. All of us. And we are all fighting our way through this. We are all, y'all, we are all doing everything we can to work through this life in the way God would have us work through this life and find a way to make a difference and find a way. You know what? Here's what I want to say, but I, I got I to gotta be careful. Y'all, don't take yourself too seriously in this life because nobody survives this journey anyway. Y'all all right? Some people are on the road a lot longer than others. But all of us go out the same way. Well, I want to die healthy. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever done that. Nobody's ever done that. Truth is, we're all, y'all, in the end, we answer to a God who's so holy that all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. So we need to be poor in spirit, and it will help us deal with the world around us. Clean hands do not determine a heart. Dirty hands do not, return, uh, do not determine a heart. Our reaction to grace determines a heart. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. What if that was the starting point of prayer? For the most holy among us. 
okay, but, 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 but I, don't, I don't think I've done anything wrong. Okay, okay. You know, I, there, there is this one phrase that, Bab, that the Baptist church uses a lot that I actually like. They say we sin every day in word, thought, and deed. Now, I don't think you have to do that. But what if you started your prayer life as, as if it happened? I think you can wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go through today and I'm not going to do because you know what your sins are. List them. I think you could do that. But what if we started the day with, Lord, I'm still just a sinner. Have mercy on me. That shifts your mindset. And you know what it does? It not only shifts your mindset for your relationship with God, it shifts the way you deal with everyone else around you. If we would all act like that, Dana Carvey would have never made the church lady because he wouldn't have had anybody to talk about. You say, they need to quit. They need to quit shooting at us like that. They need to quit doing that. Well, we're loading their gun. We're giving them their material. And there was no lack of material. As I was looking through the stuff, I was, gonna, I was trying to find one I could play in here and give you a little clip, but <laughs> no. <laughs> he interviewed the, the church lady. Yes, it's so special. We're going to interview Pat Robertson. We're going to interview Jim and Tammy today. See, some of y'all are so young, you don't even know what I just said. <laughs> don't look it up. It's not fun. Uh, you know, but I mean, there was so much to work with. We got to quit giving the world something to work with. Let me tell you what works. When I have to face one of those seven round workouts, you look at it and you go, this is going to be awful. Then you look at all the people around you and you go, but I'm not going to do it by myself. And even if I'm the last one to finish, when I'm done, they will be sitting in those chairs over there trying to breathe. And I will sit down and join them and try to breathe. And we will all talk and laugh about how awful that was. And then tomorrow, I'll hurt, but I'll be able to move. Say, so why do you do that? Because hmm. I was in the ocean with uh, Nora, this, not this past summer, summer, the last summer. And she got to where she loved the waves splashing up against us. She looks at me, she says, Papa, you're strong. I really wasn't at the moment, but she was three. And I said, yeah, papas have to stay strong. She said, why? I said, because they have to hold on to their grandbabies. Spiritually speaking and physically speaking, papas have to stay strong. And they have to stay humble because we have to hold on to our grandbabies. Holy Spirit, speak to us right now. Perhaps, Lord, perhaps there's someone here that's been wrestling with a haughty spirit, with a high-minded spirituality that is holding them back and hurting other people and, and stealing their wit witness. Lord, would you come in and gently just show, this is wrong, let's change this. Maybe there's somebody here, Lord, that's just become so tired. Their saltiness is starting to fade and the light is starting to fade. Father God, I ask that you would start to shift their mindset. Remind them that never feeling good enough is actually part of the process because we really are never good enough. Remind them that poor in spirit is what you called us to. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not a problem. It's a praise. It's not a beat down. It's a blessing. So God, remind us who we are in your presence. 
not good enough, but lifted up by the Holy Spirit and washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And then let us take that and let the world see that so that when they see our good deeds, they would glorify you. Keep us in a right spirit. And we'll give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all. Thanks for checking out another sermon from the New Life family. Here at New Life, we exist to love God and love people. If you want to join us in person in La Plata, our services are Sundays at 9, 1030, and noon. If you're looking to take a next step of faith or have any questions for the team, click the link in the description and fill out the Connect card. We'll see you all next time.